And joining us now in the studio for more on the overnight Israeli strikes in Syria is Dr. Martin Sherman, the founder and di executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. Dr. Sherman, thank you so much for coming back in today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So do you think that Israel's message was received loud and clear, or is this really maybe just the beginning of something more sinister? Well, you know, in many ways, it's more of the same, only more so. Um, as you pointed out, it's, as, as opposed to many other Israeli actions in, uh, in Syria, this was a retaliation to an Iranian attempted attack against Israel, which the Iranians might say is response to the killing of the uh, Islamic Jihadi senior operative in Damascus, which is supported by mm -hmm. Iran. So there's, you know, this, this chain of tit for tat. You never really know what's the tit and what's the tat. But um, it certainly seems to be on a bigger scale. Uh, whether this is, uh, signifies a change of policy or a more vigorous policy with the, uh, with the new appointment of uh, Naftali Bennett as, uh, as defense minister is an interesting speculation, but I think it's a little early to say. Is Israel in any sort of international uh, conflict uh, by, so to speak, breaking uh, Syrian sovereignty and, and attacking Iranian targets in Syria? Well, that's been uh, the case for quite a long time. I'm not sure. It's, the question is not whether Israel has the, the, the permission to violate uh, Syrian sovereignty, but whether it has a duty to violate it in order to, to uh, protect its, its citizens, because if Israel left Syria unscathed with the Iranian buildup, I think the uh, implications would be very dire. Now, we know that Israel avoided the S-300s, the Russian uh, you know, air defense systems that were brought over to the Assad regime. Uh, and we also know that, of course, again, these attacks were coordinated with Moscow. But what do you think Moscow is thinking at a time like this when Israel is saying, listen, we're coming in and we're going to attack? Well, they did criticize the, the attack, but I, I think Mos Moscow will, I think, display grudging understanding unless it feels that its uh, interests are being threatened. But basically, with the, the, the situation, there the, are the three corners and Moscow in the background. You have Israel, Iran, and the United States. Because I think the, 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 the real race against the clock is whether the internal situation in Iran will deteriorate before Iran can achieve its strategic objectives, objectives in, India, in, uh, in Syria. Uh, because we've seen that uh, uh, there are ongoing uh, demonstrations, disaffection there. Uh, clearly, there's an internal problem in, uh, in Iran. And uh, there is a lot of uh, disaffection within Iran with all these overseas adventures. So I think, I think on the one hand, you've got this rush by Iran to try and establish some sort of strategic presence and an eroding situation in Iran. And then that, that, of course, depends on what the United States is going to do. Well, so what do you think is more likely to occur first? A breakdown internally in Iran caused by the continuing protests, uh, or maybe an uptick in, in severe violence, possibly a full-blown you know, war between Iranian forces in Syria and Israel in the north? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure they're mutually exclusive, although I certainly do hope, as I've been saying for many times. Do you think Iran would continue with a war if, if you know, protests no, threaten no, no. its, I think, its I, I think, government? I think, I think if internal disaffection spirals out of control, I don't think they probably have to curtail their, their, their external yeah. uh, uh, adventures. But I, again, I think you know, it depends a lot on, on American resolve, how they're going to pursue the sanctions what's going to happen with uh, Trump. Trump, up to a certain stage, so showed a great deal of resolve and then backed away on a certain, certain issues. Uh, I don't know how the upcoming elections are going to affect his, his ability of playing mm -hmm. to his base. It may, be a good, uh, it may be a good policy to play it tough with Iran. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts, but, but, but as, as I say, I, I think the, the, the real question is, will the, will the situation in Iran deteriorate fast enough to curtail its overseas, uh, adventure, uh, overseas adventurism, or will they manage to uh, sure. uh, attain strategic goals before then? All right, well, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's time's game, and we'll see. Dr. Sherman, thank you so much. Thank you.